Go away. I'm not here. Hi. Nobody home but us bees. What? What are you talking about? Hannah, there is something you should know about me. Yesterday, I dressed up as a bee and sang a song. Where? In an office full of people with real jobs. You did? Oh, you're incredible. No, no, I'm not incredible. I'm desperate. If I were an actor or a struggling artist or crazy, but no, I'm perfectly sane, yet this is my life. You are the only person I'm telling, Hannah. If Michael finds out, I will never hear the end of it. I don't know why you're so embarrassed. It's not dishonest or illegal or immoral. You're right. It's just humiliating. <laughs> are you too humiliated to go away with me in a couple of weeks? Do you still want to go? Absolutely. Here's some stuff you can borrow for the trip. Thanks. You're very cute when you're depressed. Is it possible you have very poor taste in men? Sweetheart, may I steal you from your friends for just a few minutes? Oh, sure, Grammy. I know you've got lots of presents to open, but I wanted to give you this one first. Oh, they're so beautiful. They're very special. My grandmother gave them to me on my 16th birthday. I've had them ever since. Do you like them? I love them. I have so many earrings, but nothing like these. These are the best. Did your Grammy really give them to you? Mm-hmm. Can I try them on? Of course. I'm so sorry. Oh, don't worry. We'll find it. Aha, there it is. Ugh, that's not it. Hm. I wish there were fewer walnuts in this pudding. They look like earrings. Mom really likes walnuts. She doesn't even put in as many as she wants. Dad won't let her. Thank goodness for that. Ah, I think we have something here besides a lot of pudding. One heirloom earring. Great, Grammy. <laughs> that wasn't so bad. There's just a little less pudding to go around. <laughs> Happy birthday, honey. <laughs> Happy birthday, Beth. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Cut the cake in the kitchen. <laughs> Open your presents. Okay, okay. Here it goes. This isn't the present that you really want. He wouldn't fit in the box. <laughs> From Justine. <laughs> I love from Maxie's. Ah, oh, it's so great. Thank you, Justine. You're welcome. So, what's the present you really want? I'll never tell. And the next person who brings it up gets no cake. Oh. Here is a gift which will help you play better. To improve your serve, follow it to the letter. Happy birthday from the only person who can beat you at tennis. <laughs> Jonathan. Ooh. 
Winning Tennis by Megan Tate. Who's that? She's that woman who runs those intense tennis clinics in Florida. Thank you, Jonathan. But you're going to regret this. I'm going to read the book, and then I'm going to squash you. I doubt <laughs> I <won't. laughs>
Maybe you should see a doctor. You're right. If it doesn't get better soon, I'll have to have it looked at. It's probably from the train. What happened on the train? We went to New York, and the way back the train was delayed. For how long? Five hours. We stopped somewhere in Connecticut for five hours. No wonder your neck's bothering you. My back would be a mess. I told Marie we should have flown. We should have taken the shuttle, but she wouldn't listen. Now I have a pain in the neck. Well, you have to admit, the delay wasn't Marie's fault. Yeah, yeah. I probably shouldn't. <laughs> You and Marie are traveling a lot lately. We're putting the romance back in our marriage. I'll let you know if it works. <laughs> what did you order? Turkey club. What did you get? Peanut butter and jelly. Bon appetit. Come on in, Danny. Have a seat. Thanks. What's up? I was wondering if you had a particular policy about animals in the apartment. Animals? Like bugs? Pests? No, no, pets. Ah, pets. Yeah, see, I think that if I got a pet, it would help me focus on something other than myself and my petty problems. It sounds like this is an important step for you. Also, this woman I'm seeing likes dogs. I see. Well, if you got a dog, we would have to agree on some conditions. For one thing, it couldn't be a puppy. Oh. Puppies are very tough on apartments, Danny. If you're not home when they need you, you will have all kinds of problems. Messes, crying. What about other animals? Can you narrow it down a little? How would you feel if I got a monkey? A monkey would not be okay. A ferret? No ferrets. A boa constrictor? I have a problem with wild animals, Danny. If there's going to be a pet at all, it will have to be a domesticated one. How about a fish? Well, a fish sort of defeats the purpose of having a pet. How so? Well, you can't pet a fish. Design for Living, Yvonne speaking. Bill Collins, how are you? Fine, great. We're very busy working, but we always have time for you. You're buying a house? Fabulous. Of course we're interested. Why don't you stop by next Wednesday, 2 o'clock. Terrific. See you then. What? We can't do it. We can't not do it. Yvonne, work is good. Killing ourselves is bad. Turning away clients is bad. We like Bill. This is good news. Yes, we like Bill. I also like eating and sleeping, and it's very pleasant every once in a while to take a vacation. What are you? Afraid of success? Oh, please. It's no use complaining, is it? Nope. You'll thank me later. I know. That's what kills me. Hi. Hi, Yvonne. You didn't have to work late. This is a nice surprise. Yes, I'm a free man, but it looks like you two are still at it. No, no, we're all finished. I'm just waiting for Douglas to pick me up. <laughs> is your car in the shop again, Yvonne? Yes. It's old and cranky and loud enough to wake the dead. I just have to buy a new one. 
We really do need two cars. Well, sure. Douglas must just about live in his. You have to in real estate. Right. So I'm stuck either waiting for a ride from someone or taking cabs. Then I get to listen to cabbies telling very long, very boring stories. It's very annoying. I don't get annoyed at that. I love talkative cabbies. <laughs> Let's trade cars. You'll get lots of time in cabs. So how was your day? It was a big one. Mm -hmm. I gave my notice. Wow. That certainly makes it real. Oh, yeah. You can't run for state office if you're employed by the state. Are you going to set up a private practice? Yep. There he is. Have a good night. So how do you want to celebrate? Rent a movie? Get a pizza to go? You sure know how to show a girl a good time. Yeah, I use the telephone a lot. As a matter of fact, um, my phone bill last month was like $125, and that kind of freaked me out. So I thought maybe I should stop using the phone. Uh, at work, I probably am on the phone about 20 minutes an hour, um, both long distance uh, and local. I actually, uh, most of my friends are really busy, and so we don't get to see each other a lot. So we spend a lot of time talking on the phone. Sure, I do a lot of my business over the phone. Um, it's pretty important for getting in touch with people. I used to write a lot more letters. Now probably I call people up, especially my brother in California and my parents in New York. And at home, I probably make a long distance call to friends around the country um, two or three times a week. And otherwise, I'm probably on the phone 20 minutes, half hour at night. Yeah, I mean, I think you're a lot more purposeful when you get on the phone to talk business. I mean, you have your questions all lined up. You know exactly what you're looking for. When you meet someone personally, you uh, you see body language and you get a sense of how you're impacting them by what they say and what they think and, and, and how, they, how they look. But when you talk to someone on the phone, you have to really listen much more carefully, I think. In some ways, maybe the phone can be even more intimate than when you meet. A couple other features. Uh, if a call comes in, obviously answering machines, which you can take a call when you're not there. But if you just miss a call, you can dial star and then 69 and it'll call back whomever just called you. Five or ten years ago, I remember how uncomfortable people were talking into machines. And it's been, it's really interesting to see that it's gone from people talking to machines to really feel like, feeling like they're actually communicating with the person. Let's just say I'm glad you're here. What's that singing? That is my roommate Danny. Though at the moment he's certainly not the guy I moved in with. Well, he's not the type who sings around the house. Lisa, you look ravishing this morning. Danny? Are you one of those people that aliens abduct and take to their spaceships for experiments? No. Why do you ask? Look at you. Um, so Danny. What's going on? Uh, let's see. I... She... We... Uh-huh. What? My friend Hannah is a scuba diver. At this time of year? The ocean must be freezing. That's what the wetsuit is for, to keep you warm. But Danny... It's not going to fit. Now will someone please explain the bee suit? It, it's my job. I don't believe it. I deliver balloons at 10, then Hannah and I are off to the seashore. So things are going well, huh, Danny? Lisa, Hannah is the first woman I can talk to completely unedited. A frightening thought. <laughs> there we are. See you later. Ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> I want my old roommate back. Hey, it's good that Danny's happy, right? Yes. I just wish he'd stop singing. But why not? I'm 16. That's right. You just turned 16. 
You just got your driver's license. And you are certainly not driving cross-country with a couple of friends for a winter vacation because you don't have enough experience. How will I ever get the experience if you never let me do anything? I hardly think we are that strict. But, as you say, you never get to do anything you want. It's not fair. I'm sorry you feel that way. Okay, I won't drive. Just Justine and Sarah will, and they've been driving for months and months. We would be totally careful. There's nothing to worry about. Why don't you believe me? It's not that I don't believe you, Beth. But the answer is still no. But why? You may not take this trip because you are all young, relatively inexperienced drivers. Since you're proposing a winter trip, this is an even more serious consideration. We'd be sick with worry, no matter what you tell us. You're just too wonderful to have around the house. You're running for your stupid office. You're doing what you want, and we have to accommodate you. But I can't do what I want. Hi. I dropped by the library. They have a bunch of new CDs. Are you okay? Your daughter has it in for me. Oh, now she's my daughter. That's not a good sign. Did you have a fight? <laughs> oh, yes. What about? The cross-country trip. Is she still going on about that? I thought she would have given up on it by now. Her tactic is to keep asking why. I tell her all the reasons, and I cannot talk her out of it. When she asks why, you should say what I say. Which is? Because I said so. <laughs> that might have worked a few years ago. It won't work now. Maybe. Do you want me to talk to her? No. I need to face up to this one myself. Don't worry, honey. She doesn't know it sometimes, but she does love you and look up to you. I thought adolescent girls were supposed to act up with their mothers. Excuse me? Have we forgotten ages 12 and 13? Two solid years of tears and door slamming. And as I recall, you could do no wrong. No, no. I have paid my dues. Good luck. Salsa. Is it okay if I come in? Yes. Hi. The indisputable fact is that you are 16. We're going to have to work out when you're already 16 and when you're only 16. According to you, I'm going to be only 16 until I'm 90. You're right. I will be worrying about you longer than you want to know. But I don't want you to worry. It's not my fault if you do. Well, some situations worry us more than others, Beth. This trip is one. I'm sorry it's such a disappointment to you. I really am. You're just saying that to be nice, Daddy. When are you going to let me grow up? Believe me, honey. Soon you'll be doing things you never thought possible. Say the trip were in two years. Two years? I can't do anything for two years? Listen. Listen. You'd be 18. You'd be better prepared. There'd be no question about the trip. So, I can do it in two years? Do you promise? Oh, boy. You've been doing this since you were a minute old. What? Wrapping me around your little finger. Do you promise? Well, actually, right now I'm traveling. I'm on vacation for a week for my job, and we're going to be going up to Maine. We're visiting here in Boston, but 
Uh, what I like uh, in traveling is seeing different parts of the country and meeting different people and uh, this is a great place to meet lots of different people. Well, first we arrived in Boston from Shannon Island yesterday. So having come as far as Boston, we walked up along the Massachusetts Avenue to Cambridge, the famous seat of education. We wanted to have a look at Harvard. And uh, it's very, all we heard about and more, it's very interesting. Oh, it makes me feel great to see places I've never seen and to meet people and just all, all the whole bit. I spent a summer working out on Nantucket Island and we're on our way, making our way back to Michigan from Nantucket. Uh, went through Boston today, we're heading up the northeast coast to Acadia National Park, through upstate New York, through Quebec and Canada, back home to Michigan, then we'll start our out west trip. Um, from Michigan all the way up to San Francisco. I, I was fortunate. My parents took us a lot traveling growing up, mostly the United States. Neither one of us have been to Europe yet at all, but we're really looking forward to going. Well, usually I like to buy a lot of postcards that I can carry home and to tell other people about and show them pictures of places they've never seen. And I planned from the day when I was in school studying social studies, I wanted to go to every state in the Union and I've almost made it. When's your last day? A week from next Friday. Ah. It's funny how things turn out, you know? Like, if I had chosen criminal law over consumer law, we would never have worked together. If I had decided to go into private practice, we would never have met. That's right. I went straight into government work. Actually, if my father hadn't been a lawyer, I doubt I would have gone to law school at all. I don't know about that, Joe. You like arguing too much. I think you were meant to be a lawyer. But if I hadn't met Nancy, I would have gone to a different law school. Really? Where? Stanford. And I wouldn't have met Nancy if I'd been more coordinated. Go on. I was playing touch football in college. I went out for a pass. I had my eye on the ball, on the ball, on the ball and ran right into a tree. Ooh. Nancy was the first concerned bystander to reach me. No kidding. So, Joe, if I had watched where I was going, you and I would have missed each other entirely. What a week. Here's to its end. Really? Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, yeah. Do we have plans for tonight? Originally, I thought we could go dancing. Oh, oh no, I don't bad know. idea, Nancy. I know. But I'm beginning to realize that's not going to happen. I'd be happy sitting here all night. Me mm. too. As long as you continue to fill our glasses. Done. Richard, do you remember? Coming home from work on Friday night and lying down for a rest before we'd go out? <laughs> we'd wake up on Saturday morning. <laughs> <laughs> Why are weekends only two days? I need at least three to recover from the week. Yeah. <laughs> Try taking a weekend off in real estate. They don't exist. Well, folks, the tiny little weekend we have is here. Right. I say dinner out, then a movie. No, 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 please. I dread getting up out the chair. Come on, Yvonne. If I can oh. do it, you can. It's less work oh, than yeah. this. Okay, I give up. No, you get up. We all get up. Basically, I don't watch a lot of television through the week. I'll watch television on a Saturday night, generally, all night. You know, that's how I unwind and relax. I watch a lot of cable, sports programs. Um, for the most part, it's just something to do. I enjoy, like, comedy shows, for example. Uh, I find American humor specific, different from maybe other, you know, humors in other cu cultures and I also think humor is a good way of understanding the culture so uh, when it's sports yeah I mean all my friends are over or I'll go over their house I stretch out I get comfortable I kick off my slippers and and get into it 
And tear jerkers. Yeah. Tear jerkers I watch alone. I don't want nobody to see me cry. <laughs> I would say I watch at least an hour a day of news. And then like a few, about a few more hours of just for fun. Well, when you're young, you don't have as much responsibilities, you know, so you can just veg out in front of the TV. But, um, you know, you watch cartoons and stuff when you're young. But, yeah, when you have homework and like applications and stuff, you just don't have time to watch TV. But I like things like the Discovery Channel. Um, things that teach you about the world recently. Um, over the last few years, I've been watching more things like that. Uh, less what fiction. It's the last thing I want to buy. I don't, it's, I don't have anything against television. I just uh, don't have one, don't want to buy one. We could use another week to finish this. I know, I can hardly believe this. Me neither. Oh well, some cleaning is just a chore, other cleaning is good for the soul. I take it you think this is good for the soul? Are you kidding? Moving is an opportunity to make a fresh start. Get rid of the stuff you don't use, the things you don't want. Get rid of these old magazines. Those were for the Banton case. That was five years ago. Out they go. I'll miss your efficiency, Trish. Oh, you haven't seen the last of me. I'm coming to you for a job after law school. There are two sets of these books. I know. This set is mine. The other belongs to the office. <laughs> oh, and one day I couldn't find my mouse pad, so I went out and bought another. Which one would you like? Neither, thanks. Oh, come on. A little token of my esteem. Fine. Either one is lovely. It's too bad you can't have a yard sale here. I had one the last time I moved. I made 200 bucks. <whistles> but the best thing was how I felt the next day. I felt completely liberated, free. I never realized this could be so exhilarating. <laughs> See, I told you it would feel good. Wait, wait, wait. The old man who finds the frog keeps it in his pocket. Yes. Why doesn't he kiss it? Honey, am I the only person whose jokes you interrupt? Or do you do this to other people who are merely trying to entertain you? Okay, okay. I'm sorry. Start over. An old man walks down the street, comes upon a frog who can talk. Then what? The frog tells the old man, I'm really a beautiful, sensuous, wildly desirable woman. I got the point. A beautiful woman who's been put under an evil spell. Only a kiss can set me free. I'll belong completely to the man whose kiss releases me. Kiss me and I'll be yours. Yours, all yours. Yeah, yeah, so the guy. So the old guy picks up the frog, puts it in his pocket, and keeps walking down the street. The frog yells, hey, What's the matter with you? Aren't you going to kiss me? And the old guy says, At my age, I'd rather have a talking frog. <laughs> Hi, Nancy. Oh. Hey, me. You look like you're having fun. I guess I am. I probably haven't done this since Beth was little. Sometimes I think we have children just so that we can play again. Definitely. I still love to jump rope. Well, I was just bringing you some of your mail. I fear our current mail carrier will never get it completely right. He's something, isn't he? He's so bad he's almost entertaining. Almost. Jamie. Did you live here when we had the neighborhood bonfires? You've been here at least as long as we have, right? I think we've lived here longer than anyone, except the Carrozes and the Doyles. Do you remember those bonfires? They were great, weren't they? They were so big, you'd feel hot even though it was freezing out. They're against the law now. Yes, to protect the environment. I know. But I love a big bonfire so much, I'd almost be willing to break the law. Oh, come on. Got a match? 
<laughs> nah, I'll stick to raking them. Well, I'll leave you to it. Oh, next time it rains, wear your galoshes. Just in case you find a puddle you want to jump into. <laughs> Yvonne, Nancy, you did it. You come up with a marvelous proposal. I love it, and I want to start the work right away. No, no, don't thank me. I should thank you. You did so much work. But I want to tell you, it's not just the plans and taste. I know you will turn these humble rooms into a creative expression of my personality. For this, I thank you. You see, I feel you truly understand me. You are really the kind of designers I've wished for all along. And I don't have to tell you how fond Antonio is of both of you. <laughs> but there are some things to discuss. Some of the furniture simply won't do. And you snuck a carpet into the design, you bad girls. But we can go into that later. Today is a celebration. I so look forward to working with you. To us and to our beautiful home. Ah. Now, there's nothing left to discuss today, is there? No, lovely. Please excuse me, but I must fly. Antonio will see you out. Till next time. Ciao. <clears throat> oh, Douglas. <laughs> Yvonne and Nancy aren't back yet. I'm hoping that a long meeting means they were given the project. They do deserve it. Would you like something to drink? Uh, no thanks. So, do you feel like reading a speech? A speech? Oh, your speech! No, no, I don't want to read it. Speeches are made, Richard. Go ahead, let's hear it. <clears throat> Good morning, fellow citizens. It was once said hey, by- Hey! What's going on? Hi, Beth. Hi, honey. I'm practicing my speech. Wanna listen? Is this like a sneak preview? Yep. Go ahead, Richard. We're all ears. Good morning, fellow citizens. It was once said by a prominent politician. Has our trust in government been abused? These matters must be dealt with. It was once thought that politicians came from the... Thank you and good day. My God, was it that bad? It didn't really sound like you, Dad. You know what? You're using way too much of the passive voice. People won't know how dynamic you are if you don't communicate in a dynamic way. It's begun. The remake of Richard Hobart. Let me see that speech. Thanks. Nancy, this is really nice. We're so used to watching my project on our old TV. It'll be great to see it on yours. Good. We're excited to see your work. Right. So now I'm doing bees, clowns. Last week he was a bottle of champagne. <laughs> that was a challenge. <laughs> I hang out in Harvard Square a lot, but never 24 hours all at once. <laughs> well, Michael didn't shoot it all at once. He would get up at all hours of the day and night. Then he'd go into the square to film the different times. I used to spend a lot of time there. Me too. But now that I'm working downtown, it's not very convenient. Well, good luck with your campaign. Thank you. Can I get you anything? No, thanks. No, thanks. I don't even read the paper. I could never get used to reporters in my face all the time. Michael, I'll pop in your tape if you'd like to start. I just want to say, this is not the entire piece, but it is a day in Harvard Square compressed to a couple of minutes. So, uh... Hey, 
<laughs> That's the movie we rented last night. No, no, we returned the movie to the video store. We'll be right back. We we'll sell newspapers here in the morning. Get here, well, we still open up at 5.30 in the morning. We start off loud and sloppy and finish up quiet and neat, and it's kind of a kind of an odd thing. It seems strange every single day when you do it again. I take the red line to Harvard Square, and it takes me about 20 minutes. When it's raining, I can't skateboard, so I get really mad. <laughs> I shop very spontaneously in Harvard Square. The only people that are actually buying anything uh, are sort of tourists or rich students. We wanted to come on Harvard, Harvard campers, so here I am. So I have really enjoyed it. I work for the city of Cambridge. My name is Officer Padua. Uh, I just recently uh, was hired. I'm a rookie. Today was just taking in a nice day. Yeah, it's rainy all weekend, so we decided to get out today. I think this is the worst day of my life, actually. Uh, it's the first time I've done it. Well, I grew up in Philadelphia, and there's a lot of history there. And Boston reminds me a lot of that. I work in the square, on the other side of the square. And uh, now we're back here at night, just hanging out. And we have some friends down from college. And uh, that's what we're doing. It's nice when Harvard Square is not crowded. Yeah. Harvard Square is pretty much closed after, after 1 o'clock in the morning. It's good, but it's not Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. Mom, this is so creepy. They won't stop looking at us. If you don't like it now, think how you'll feel watching it on TV. Oops. I take it back. It won't be so bad. Good afternoon, friends and fellow citizens. My name is Richard Hobart, and I'm running for Attorney General of the state of Massachusetts. One of our great presidents, Thomas Jefferson, once said, To be honest, I don't like reading speeches. I'd rather just talk to you. So that's what we'll do, at least for this once. I'll remember to be brief, if you'll remember to be merciful. <laughs> I'd like to tell you my idea of a civilized society, what it should be and what it shouldn't. Let's spell out the role of the law in ensuring the best possible quality of life. After all, we're in this together. Thank you for listening. I'm sure I'll be speaking with you again. <laughs>